Good evening, everyone. It's that time again, we're back here with Chamber CEO Glenn Hammer for social distancing, also known as Happy Hour with Hammer. Glenn, good to see you. Good to see you, Gareth. Uh, all right, let's go through the day's headlines. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the Grand Canyon being closed. Last time we were talking about the Grand Canyon being closed it was because of a government shutdown. And you have worldwide media asking you if that's even possible. This time, unfortunately, it's true. I became something of a celebrity in the Middle East. I believe I was on Al Jazeera multiple times where they were trying to figure out how you could close a wonder of the world. This time it's uh, the coronavirus that's yeah. shut it. And, you know, the serious point here, Garrick, is just our tourism industry, which is 300,000 jobs. I mean, it has taken blow after blow after blow after blow. Yeah. And this is just the latest one. Yeah. Uh, it's not to say you can't go and commune with nature and still practice good social distancing, but unfortunately, national parks are, people where, are places where people congregate. That's, that's the thing. I mean, right now, it's, it's a national effort to uh, slow the spread and you know, that's that's unfortunately uh, a casualty of all of this. But, yeah. uh, you know, and, and I believe it's been, you know, trips to the Grand Canyon are now suspended until further notice. But, yeah. you know, health and safety first. Uh, it's too bad. Not a shocker, but it's too bad. All right. Let's talk about. Uh, and by the way, the Grand Canyon, for those uh, out of state viewers, it is in Arizona. That's right. Despite what Nevada might like tell you. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Let's talk about uh, the day and conference calls. You started out the day uh, hearing from the Godfather, Tom Donahue, the head of the U.S. Chamber, um, obviously one of the country's leading business figures. What do you have to say? Well, he he stressed that the CARES Act offers a tremendous amount of relief to businesses, small, medium and large. But he took a particular uh, point to to make the case that it's very important for our small business community to sign up and participate in the Paycheck Protection Program. That's the $350 billion program. That's really a two-month lifeline. It's really a grant for our small businesses in Arizona and across the country. Uh, let's talk about that, because last night we heard from State Representative T.J. Shope, who talked about this. We hope that in an upcoming show, we're going to have our friend Paul Hickman from the Bankers Association. Yeah. Glenn, as far as we know, knock wood, this is supposed to be a fairly painless application process, and really any lender should be able to participate. Any lender should be able to participate, Garrick. The program starts Friday, so kudos yeah. to the U.S. Department of Treasury for working at record time. And it's supposed to be this simple. You go into the bank, you show your, uh, you basically prove your average payroll for the last year, 2019, yep. Yep. and you get a loan that's worth about two and a half months worth of that. That could be used for payroll, your rent, and utilities for yep. the eight weeks after the loan is, is, is originated. That's, that's, uh, that's a pretty potent uh, tool. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty good cocktail and I was reading about it that I think as you just touched on most of this is convertible into a grant but even for that stuff that isn't for example inventory that you might need to build up a low interest rate so the the feds are trying to make this as simple as possible 0.5% is the interest rate for the remainder so that's about as low as you can go so yeah. you know we we, we encourage uh, all small businesses in the state that are eligible, and that's the vast, vast majority of these small businesses to apply. And for the latest information, I'd urge uh, the viewers of the show to go to uh, www.uschamber.com. Uh, they, ha they have a updated fact sheet that's the best in the business. So I would urge people to go there uh, tonight, look at it, and, and to take full advantage of this very important effort. Yeah, and if you have a... Uh... Uh, Spanish-speaking entrepreneur in your life, make sure that you also send them to that website. And uh, thanks to our friends at the Arizona-Mexico Commission for getting that small business guide out in Spanish as well. Well, I want to give particular praise to Jessica Pacheco for her work to make sure that that happened. And that actually made us all in Arizona look good because the U.S. Chamber uses that now 
yeah. as their uh, Spanish version, and it was actually brought up at a broad-based call uh, er, uh, earlier today where Arizona got uh, uh, praised for its work to translate that important document. Yeah, that's, that's good to hear. Um, okay, so not only are you in your capacity as head of the state chamber trying to get people to sign up for this, but uh, your colleagues over at the Arizona Commerce Authority, namely CEO Sandra Watson, she's also leading an effort uh, to coordinate the business community and encouraging business, businesses to apply for this program. Glenn, she's usually in the business attraction business and retention, but now we're in the lifeline business. Well, it was a great conference call uh, earlier today that Paul Hughes of the Arizona Commerce Authority led and Paul Hickman, who runs the Arizona Bankers Association, and we're soon going to have on the program, uh, participated in. But it was, uh, I believe, over 1,500 Arizonans from all over the state uh, were yeah. part of this conference call. And, and a big focus of it was not to be a broken record, but the best tool in the toolbox, the Paycheck Protection Program. Yeah. It's interesting, these uh, national calls that we've all been on. I was on one today of state chambers and uh, our, our friends at the state chambers, they love the Skype show, Glenn. So you've got, you've got fans outside the state. So congratulations on that. Well, it was great to have Neil Bradley of the U.S. Chamber on uh, a few days ago. And, you know, I was also on a White, Hu White House call that was uh, also targeted at uh, really the, the state chamber uh, and some of the other chamber leaders across across America. And again, the same theme. They had uh, officials from the Department of Treasury and from the Small Business, Associ Small Business Association use this Paycheck Protection Program. It is, yeah. it is the tool that is going to help our economy uh, weather this storm. All right, let's shift gears a little bit and head south. Talked about the Arizona uh, Mexico border story, A1 of the Republic today. Yes, we still get the print version at my house. Um, talking about uh, not uh, U.S. customs, but Aduanas, Mexican customs, the agency overseeing that uh, it, it's a smaller agency, uh, closing the pedestrian crossing between Nogales, Arizona and Nogales, Sonora. Unfortunate, but not terribly surprising. Also, uh, an elimination of Sunday cargo service at Mariposa. Again, disappointing, not a shock. Uh, Glenn, we now have these agencies. They're going to be responding to traffic levels now that they're going to be dipping in some at some ports. They're, they're doing uh, what they have to do. And, you know, both of us have worked with uh, the, the fine men and women at the, at the customs agency. Uh, yeah. They've done everything possible during difficult times to keep things flowing. This is understandable. What we need to, though, make sure is there's also been some stories of some difficulty of getting milk products and some other products from Arizona into Mexico. And we, we need to make sure, particularly on the, on the food supply, is that it's as easy and frictionless as possible to get uh, our you know, milk right. and other products we're exporting to Mexico. But the uh, yummy tomatoes and avocados that I still rely on for my breakfast in uh from our friends to the South. Glenn, I know there's something uh, that you care a lot about is that you don't wanna risk the double whammy. You've gotta make sure that the fruits and vegetables continue to come into Arizona, but local governments, Douglas, San Luis, they're gonna feel it in their sales tax collections, aren't they? It, it's going to be very, very unpleasant. You know, We know that some of those communities, uh, 60, maybe even 70% of the sales tax revenues come from visitors uh, from Mexico. Uh, I do believe it's important that the Economic Rescue Plan, the CARES Act, included uh, resources for not just state governments, but there's also uh, some local dollars in there right. as well. And as a border state, we're really going to have to uh, you know, make sure that we're on top of this because, yes, some of our uh, fine cities and towns, particularly along the border community, are just uh, getting walloped. Yeah, it's true. Uh, that's how they pay the bills is with the, the, those cross-border shoppers. That's, that's what makes those cities go. So we want to make sure that they bounce back as quickly as possible. Yes. Glenn, uh, so let's look a little further south then into Mexico itself. Last time we discussed this, you expressed some concern that uh, the president, AMLO, may not be putting on the best display of what social distancing ought to look like that the public health system 
itself, the institutions might be better prepared than the president. Uh, some messaging coming out of Mexico that the president may be starting to get that message. What are you hearing from your contacts in Mexico about the way AMLO is now responding? Yeah, no, it, it seems that there's been dramatic improvement where, you know, that now it seems that they're pretty much where we are as a state in Arizona and as a, a country in terms of making sure that there's social distancing and, and some of the activities that we all love and enjoy, uh, such as going out to restaurants and bars uh, for the time being uh, ceases as, as they deal with the surge in cases. And the, the mayor of uh, CDMX, as they say, uh, Mexico City, Mayor Scheinbaum, she, she's done an excellent job of leading North America's largest city uh, through this crisis uh, to this point in time. Yeah. And if you look at a city where uh, people live in close quarters sometimes, we've already seen what is going on in New York. Uh, Glenn, you're a uh, frequent visitor to, to Mexico City. For those who haven't been, you ain't seen nothing when it comes to big cities. Uh, just to uh, get a sense of the scale of that place and how many people live there, uh, this virus could be potentially devastating to a city that large. And, and a city that large in the density, you know, the city proper is 9 million, probably the metropolitan area is over 20 million. You know, New York City, I call it my hometown, is a yep. small town in comparison at about 8 million or so. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I, I am glad that I believe Mexico and Mexico City have now landed in, in a good place in terms of how to treat this pandemic. And, and uh, you know, this is... This is one, Garrick, where, you know, the more we can work uh, closely with our friends to the south to make sure we're still keeping necessary commerce going, particularly when it comes to food and essential supplies, uh, yeah. that's, that, that's really where the focus needs to be uh, during this point of the uh, COVID-19 situation. All right, before we let you go here, let's talk uh, sports. I don't know if you've put much thought into this, but... If the NBA season were to try to get back on track, would you support some sort of neutral venue, no fans model? What about baseball? You've heard Derek Hall say that if they want to use, if Major League Baseball wants to use Chase Field for neutral games and just let people use, let teams use the field, he'd be open to it. Six home games left on the Sun's schedule. Do you, what, give us your, your sports take here. Yeah, Garrick, there's only so many times I could watch reruns of The Office. It's true. Uh, I, seriously, I mean, I'm going nuts on the sports side. I love sports. It's, it's, it's one of the great delights in life. I, I love our Arizona sports teams. Uh, I, I, would be, I personally would be all for playing games in empty facilities uh, if, if we need to do that for, for the time being, so long as it could be done safely. Uh, I, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, you may have seen that Jason Rowley from the Suns uh, said that with the issues with construction at the downtown arena, they're willing to go to the Coliseum to finish out the season. Uh, the Mercury were already planning for that. So I'm up for it. Why, why not play out the string? It, it seems in terms of the way the virus attacks uh, for younger, healthy professional athletes, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a doctor, that uh, if proper precautions are taken, uh, I believe there's a way to do it. I mean, there's certainly certain sports like tennis, for example, where I think you could probably pull that off uh, as well in terms of empty facilities. But yeah. I'm for anything that gets uh, sports rolling again, so, so long as it's safe for, for the athletes or anyone else who would be in the vicinity of the area of play. They're, they're considering something similar to what you're describing in Europe. Uh, the English Premier League could say, look, we've got only a handful of soccer games left in this English season. Why don't we go to some of these neutral practice fields, no fans, and just play the games and get the season done? I, I actually think it's, if we could do this safely, this is so important. I mean, sports are something that uh, we could all uh, – talk about and it and it even transcends not just state lines but international borders and it's and it's and it's and it's a positive and i you know the, the more we could have 
a normal life during this difficult time, whether it's taking out from your favorite restaurant and and also uh, uh, because of Governor Ducey's uh, wise decision to allow alcohol to delivery, to be able to enjoy as much of that experience as you normally would. Yeah. I would say the same for sports and other areas. The closest we can get, that's our sort of virtual reality right now. Right. Yeah. All right. As always, thanks for the commentary. Glenn, thanks for doing the show. We are supposed to have a banking show tomorrow night, so stay tuned for that. But thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Glenn, we'll catch up with you tomorrow. Have a good night, Gary. Thanks.